Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. It is Tuesday. As always, I am delighted to be here with you to talk about another book with another author. In this case, we have the first book in a new series, and I am joined by returning author Allison Levy, who was on the podcast before. Hope your week is off to a great start. We are just charging our way through December. I cannot believe we're less than a week from Christmas, that it is the 19th already. Um, but in that vein, uh, Hubby and I went to two Christmas markets over the weekend. The first one was here in our little village. It is a small Christmas market, maybe, I think, 15 huts about that. Not, I didn't count, but I'd say fewer than 20. But what I love about our Christmas market is the view. So it is up on a cliff uh, overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. So if you stand at the top of the row of huts and look down between them, it's it's a double row and there's a there's picnic tables in between and uh, you look down and then you've got this amazing view of the Atlantic Ocean and it's just we went last year too and it's just beautiful and it was a gorgeous sunny day and uh, it was just it's so much fun and then this year we went to a christmas market in a neighboring town that we hadn't been to this town has a castle the castle does have christmas lights cannot complain about that (laughs) but the uh the thing i liked best about this christmas market this one was this wasn't what i liked best although i did like it it was geared uh seemed a lot more for kids so there was there were rides there was a train there was a merry-go-round there was things like that fewer um like opportunities to shop but there were food and there was a little uh play going on and things like that but they had a giant lit up pink squirrel statue thingamabobby i don't even know what to call it it was an art piece it was amazing i have absolutely no idea what it has to do with christmas because i don't even see squirrels here so i don't even know what it has to do with portugal but it was amazing it was pink it was the coolest thing ever and now i'm just gonna randomly throw pink squirrel into conversations because every time we went by it i would do the thing from up squirrel and then i started doing pink squirrel yeah, this, this is why i probably should stay home more but uh hubby's good natured with my random random throwing out of words and phrases <laughs> At any rate, it was a lot of fun. I hope whatever you did this weekend brought you some joy of a pink squirrel variety. (laughs) Isn't there a drink called a pink squirrel? I don't know. I I, I don't drink enough to know that. But you let me know if there is, in fact, a drink called a pink squirrel. Or if you were to invent a drink called a pink squirrel, what would be in it? That could be either alcoholic or non-alcoholic. I would love to hear your recipes either way. So... Like I said, we have returning author Allison Levy with us today. She is here to talk about the first book in her Witch's Odyssey series. This book is called Magic by Any Other Name. As I mentioned, she was on the podcast before. That was back in March. That is episode 403. If you are interested in hearing about her other series, the Damon uh, Damon Collecting series. She does talk a little bit about that. So after you hear this interview and you think, yeah, I want to know more about that, you can go listen to episode 403. In the meantime, though, let me give you the description of Magic by Any Other Name. As I said, it's the first book in the Witch's Odyssey series. Ivy Nichols O'Reilly has grown up in a wealthy family full of magic, fantasy creatures, and emotional abuse. But when her narcissistic mother arranges an unwanted marriage for her, the young witch reaches her breaking point. She drops out of college, changes her name to Georgette, and flees across the country with her best friend, a wood nymph named Mei Xing. Georgette is determined to build a new identity and a new life, but her journey leads her to cross paths with a number of magical creatures. A were hyena searching for his kidnapped wife, a vampire who runs a unique magical business, a curandero, a shamanistic practitioner of traditional medicine, and a Valkyrie who, along with her raven partner, wants to make a risky deal. 
who make it clear to her that the past is not so easily left behind. In order to grow into her new identity, help her new friends, and develop a healthy relationship with a man she's beginning to care for, Georgette will have to confront the privileges that have shielded her from the pain and ugliness of the magic community in which she was raised, and find the strength to overcome the trauma of her childhood. That is, of course, the description of magic by any other name. It is urban fantasy. I love that cast of characters that we just went through in the description, because it seems more unique than sometimes you get. And, you know, maybe I'm just not thinking clearly about other urban fantasies that I've read, but to me this just felt like a a unique set of characters that you don't often see thrown together into one story. I mean, how often do you hear about where hyenas, first of all? But uh, there's just a, a lot of characters, and this is told mainly from the point of view of Georgette. I mean, no. It's told from a multiple points of view. You hear from all of those characters. Georgette is the main protagonist. The storyline revolves around her. But we do hear from a lot of those characters that we just that I just described in that book blurb. So you do get a lot of different perspectives from these very unique characters, which I appreciate a lot. Um, Just a little bit different. They're complex. I don't know how much I like all of the characters. They, They make questionable choices, as everybody does, and as characters need to do in order to keep interest and and have some kind of character growth and arc. But Let's go ahead and uh, let Allison talk more about the writing of the book, the inspiration behind the book, etc. So again, the book is called Magic by Any Other Name. It is the first in the Witches Odyssey series, and the author is Allison Levy. Allison, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me back. I'm happy to have you back, and I'm excited to talk about a new book and a new series. But before yeah. we do that, um, if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about yourself, whether new listeners who need an introduction or people who heard the first intro or interview and maybe need a refresher, that would be great. Sure. Great. Um, I'm Allison Levy. I'm an urban fantasy author I'm living in North Carolina with my husband, our son, our two cats, and our three rough collies. Uh, I started writing as a teenager as a way to uh, cope with uh, what was then undiagnosed anxiety. Uh, I've published two books prior to this new one that's just come out. Uh, They are part of a different series, the Damon Collecting series. They don't relate to this book. So if you prefer just to, to jump into this one, you don't need any background for it. Yes. And when you were here last time, we did talk about uh, the Damon Collecting series. So I had that in my brain when you sent me the book for this one. And I was like, it it took me a minute. I I said, wait, this is this is not what I was expecting. (laughs) It's a whole new world. It is a whole new world. And you uh, it's so this one is urban fantasy. Yes. Um, And can you give a uh, sorry, it's called uh, Magic by Any Other Name. Can you give an overview of the story? Yes. Um, my main character is a young woman, a young witch named uh, Ivy Nichols O'Reilly. Uh, she grows up in this uh, wealthy family. It's full of magic, full of uh, fantasy creatures and also emotional abuse. So when Ivy's narcissistic mother arranges uh, a marriage for her that she is not interested in, uh, she decides she's had enough. She drops out of college uh, in, in secret, doesn't tell anyone. And, uh, just goes across the country with her best friend, who's a wood nymph named Mishing. Uh, she changes her name to Georgette, and she starts building a new identity and, and a new life. But while they're traveling, uh, they happen to cross paths with a were hyena who's uh, trying to find his kidnapped wife. And they meet a vampire who's running this uh, very strange magical business, and a Valkyrie who, along with her raven partner, wants to make a deal with them, but is uh, kind of secretive about what's going on behind the deal. So she kind of makes a decision. She's going to try to put her magic to use uh, for other people's benefit. Uh, she also meets a, um, a Curandero, who's a, a shamanistic practitioner of traditional medicine. And he's also a psychology student. So he kind of takes it upon himself to help her grow into her new identity and uh, develop this healthy relationship with uh, the new man in her life. And throughout it all, she kind of has to come face to face with these privileges she's grown up with, which have shielded her to the real ugliness of the magic community uh, in which she was raised. But again, in this very sheltered environment. So she has to kind of find the strength in herself to overcome trauma of her childhood and become a better person. 
All right, now that you know a little bit more about Allison, a little bit more about the book and the series, it is time for our first break of this episode. When we come back, we'll be talking more about that cast of characters and all of their different points of view. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Golden State Media Concepts bring you the Bible Study Podcast. Reflect and journey the Bible as together we study God's Word and be inspired. Bible study made fun and informative for all ages. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my conversation with Allison Levy. We are talking about her first book in her Witch's Odyssey series. It is called Magic by Any Other Name. Let's return now to that conversation. There's a lot of very um, complex characters in the story, some of whom you're not sure, do I do I like this character? Do I approve of their choices? <laughs> um, but And so that, that lends an interesting level, but also I... I like as you were as you were giving the overview. You know, you mentioned a Valkyrie and a were hyena, and Meishing is a nymph. Um, there's there's so many different characters, and mm-hmm. often when you go into urban fantasy, you, you you know you have certain expectations of what it's going to be. This one, I kept thinking, nope, I wasn't expecting that, <laughs> <laughs> which I love. Well, Glad to hear that. Yeah, I I love being able to to throw a little bit of a curveball here and there. So what was your initial inspiration or jumping off point for the story then? I actually started writing this book um, shortly after I went no contact with my dad. And there was a a whole family history behind that. Um, Ultimately, it was just it was the best decision for me. Um, But a lot of those roiling emotions that I was going through and that people in my situation, you know, going no contact with um, a family member go through are what Georgette's struggling with as she's leaving her family and kind of wrestling with uh, her identity and um, her past. And like some of the things that Georgette experiences with her family, uh, specifically her mother, are things that I've gone through. And um, so writing this book was sort of a, a means of me to start processing that unhealthy relationship that I had for all those years uh, I did make Georgette's nar- narcissistic parent her mother instead of her father. Um, you know, the stories are are not my mom. My mom is lovely, but um, it part of that was because the um, the mother daughter relationship just works better for this story story structure. But um, also because it it was kind of hard for me with the prospect of writing about a narcissistic father. It felt kind of triggering, especially at the point I was at in my life and. My anxiety was just ramped up to 11 and I had all this, all this past trauma that I was finally trying to confront. I needed the the writing as part of my, my healing from that. In some ways, I wasn't prepared for how intimate that would feel. So I think writing as uh, the mother was just, it was a slight distance. I was still able to, to kind of bring in the trauma that I was dealing with and, and put it on the page in a way that I hoped would, would lend itself well to a story without uh, me having to go too deeply into it. Sure. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And actually that, that um, explains a bit about your, um, your dedication in the book. Mm-hmm. Which yes. makes reference to it. And, and to be fair though, um, Georgette's father is no peach either. I mean, he's, he is not. No, he is very much sort of this, uh, yeah, not really aware that there are how many children or whatever in his house. He's not dealing with that. Yeah. He is, he is strictly kind of a 1950s father. He's, he's, uh, everything is left to his wife who is not doing well with the children, but he's just, uh, happily turning a blind eye to that. No. Uh, the story is told from multiple points of view. Georgette is kind of the central figure of the story. Um, so from for Georgette, let's start with her. What about her as kind of the main protagonist do you think is going to resonate with readers? 
Well, she's, um, she's, as I mentioned, she's at this very pivotal moment in her life. It's just it's the moment where she's kind of hit her breaking point. She's decided to get away from the narcissistic manipulative family. Um, and the book, um, kind of starts under the impression where she's got this headspace that she's weak and she's useless because that's how her family has labeled her. Or like, it's like, oh gosh, you're so dumb. You're so useless. You're, you're ugly. What, what is, what is the matter with you? So she's sort of internalized that. And by the end of the book, she's, um, she's learning to set boundaries and she's kind of starting to feel her own worth. So she, what I hope is going to resonate with people is that she's not what you would necessarily expect of a you know, strong female character. In some ways, she's very fragile and she's full of anxiety and she has a lot of self doubt. But that's how a lot of people who've been in her situation start off feeling before they put in the work to um, get past their their trauma. And I really hope that's going to be relatable to um, to people. It it was a lot of that was was what I went through, and I know there's a lot of people who go through that. Um, I mean, with the the fine family dynamics that that my character uh, Georgette grew up with, she recognizes that they're unhealthy, and she she doesn't want to continue with them. But uh, she also hasn't fully processed that this is trauma. And that's a case for a lot of people who have experienced emotional abuse, because a, a physical abuse, I don't think anyone could look at it and say, oh, that's not abuse. We recognize that's abuse. It's it's physical. It's obvious. It's It's very difficult to see. Emotional abuse is a lot more insidious. It's something that we, as a society, I think, are just starting to recognize how damaging it can be. So even Georgette at one point in the book, um, when she hears her mother's treatment labeled as abuse, she kind of backs off from it. it's like, what? No, that's it's not abuse. I think it's it's a much trickier label for people to look at. So I hope by reading Georgette's story that um people will see that you know that, that there's a very dark side to these things that many of us grew up with and thought were just normal that that and many people still just think well it's not good but it's not abuse so more than anything i really hope that reading her story will show people that you can move past that you can find strength in yourself that it's not just about being super confident sometimes the strength is just finding that little piece of yourself that you're willing to just plant your feet and say okay no i'm done this and that's where she's getting by the end of the book, but it's it's a long journey. It's a long journey for many of us. Absolutely, and she might not be as confident as some people would hope, some readers would hope. But uh, I think because of her her experiences growing up, she's very different from the rest of her family, and she's she's much more kind. Her family is not <laughs> they're not nice, but, but not nice, no. much more kind, and she sees injustices in the system in the world of magic that her family wouldn't even think were injustices so for me i i really appreciated that about her character it is it it is part of her um her growth process she has she's she's seen the injustices but i think she has to confront them even more throughout the story to recognize just how privileged she's been that uh, like she saw these things but she had the option of ignoring them for most right. of her life. And uh, she, once she's out in the world, she realizes, okay, maybe that wasn't the best way for me to grow up. And can I do better? I will say that I really do appreciate Georgette as a main character because she is trying very hard to break cycles, uh, generational cycles, not just of generational trauma, but also just the things that she's trying to unlearn a lot of the things that she learned. I really appreciate uh, that about her character. Looking forward to seeing that growth continue in the next probably two books. I just, uh, you know, I appreciate that in, in characters that I read about. It makes them more interesting, I think. But it is time for our second break of this podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking more about writing from multiple points of view, how that presents a challenge, how it's fun, etc., all of those wonderful things. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. 
Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my conversation with author Allison Levy. Yeah. And she is the main protagonist, but then we get points of view from lots of other characters as well. Mm -hmm. So can you talk about the decision to write from multiple points of view and were there any particular challenges? Absolutely. Um, uh, partly, I, I just felt that the different points of view were the best way to tell the story to get a, a wider scope of uh, everything going on. But it was also that I wanted, as much as I want readers to get into Georgette's head space, I think having the entire book from her point of view would be a, really exhausting and limiting. Um, you know, like I was in her situation, um, Georgette at that point in her life is just in a near constant state of heightened anxiety, which is a lot to deal with and th there are even times i feel that in her chapters i it i feel it's authentic uh, to the experience but it is also very tiring in some ways you're like oh gosh all this anxiety what do i do with it and she she learns a lot over the course, course of the story but i wanted the reader to see the other side of of the story too so that by the end you know, she and the other characters have sort of met in the middle in terms of life experience um mm -hmm. In terms of challenges, um, actually, I really enjoyed writing from different points of view. That's that's a happy challenge for me. It's to um, okay, I got to switch gears and get into this other character now. I enjoy that sort of challenge. Um, the harder challenge, I think, was to properly convey the sort of emotions that come with narcissistic manipulation, because that's one of the reasons people don't see it as a abuse is that they don't understand how crushing. It feels to be on the receiving end. So that was very challenging to get into and, and write across. Um, I think it was also sort of a challenge to to make Georgette come across as strong in some ways because she is fragile and struggling in a lot of ways. So it was it was hard to get that strength through at some points. What tools or techniques did you use to keep the over? all story and timeline straight as you were writing through those different points of view that that was some um, challenging at some points i did have to take a lot of notes um you know to remind myself okay i gotta remember to come back to this i have to remember to bring this in but I get, those are the happy challenges that that i enjoy and some of that is going back and rereading it for the umpteenth time and go oh yeah i i for I forgot that little plot point. I got to weave that back in. I don't want this loose end hanging out. But yeah, some of it just comes down to organization, which as a writer, you know, sometimes we're not the best at. But um, it, it did force me to um, pay closer attention to what I was doing at, at places, definitely. I would imagine, yeah. <laughs> This is urban fantasy, but there is still um, there is still world building that happens. So mm -hmm. you had to set up a lot of the systems of magic, the rules of magic, the the way that world worked. Did you do a lot of that before you started writing, or did it evolve as you wrote? Um, as a writer, we um, we tend to group ourselves into either the pantsers, the people who just write. You know, by the see their pants as they go, or the the plotters, the people who plot it all out. I, I think I start off as a pantser, and then once I get a grip on the story, I go and I I plot the whole thing out. So I think I started off just uh, writing what I felt that a uh, a young witch would be in this situation. And then as I I went, I'm like, okay, let's let's uh, let's make some notes and get a better handle on this. So 
the world building, I mean, it's very much rooted in in the world that we know, just in uh, extra layers of um, fantasy sort of uh, put on top of it and put underneath it here and there. Um, so uh, the rules of magic, that was very much a, okay, let's, let's um, see as we go and let's see um, what I can develop this into. And I, that's a, it's a world that's still developing. Uh, Georgia um, has always been told by her family that she's the weakest, that she's the the worst at, at magic. But a lot of that, as we see as we go, it's not that she's the worst at magic. It's that she w- views magic a little differently. She uses it differently than her family does. And she's able to accomplish some great things by the end. So the, the magic system... Like I said, it's it's still it, it's going to be a work in po- progress throughout uh, all the books. I didn't want to throw everything as exposition at once, but um, it, it was um, in terms of research. No, it, that was the thing that sort of came from within the research. Um, a lot of the research I did was into the different mythologies and folklores from around the world because I wanted to draw in all these different fairy tale creatures and fun things. And I I loved all that reading. I love myths and folklore. I love reading books that are retellings of famous fairy tales or, or mythical stories. Honestly, the biggest research I did was not so much on the um, the magic or the fairy tales. It was on San Jose, California, because it's the primary setting for the book. Um, it wasn't initially. I was thinking of doing San Francisco, but I thought, oh, there's a lot of books on San Francisco. I wonder if I can find something a, a little less... Um, a a little less used. Um, I decided on San Jose, which I admittedly I've never visited, um, but I did a lot of reading about it. I I looked at a lot of images, a lot of maps, a lot of history. I wanted to get as much of that into my head as possible. I used to live in Northern California and I haven't spent a lot of time in San Jose, but every time I've ever driven through San Jose has been rush hour and it's been horrible. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) So that's my experience. Plus, uh, getting do you know the way to San Jose stuck in my head every yes. time I drive there. But <laughs> I, yeah. I'm familiar with the song. I definitely put it on a couple of times. <laughs> yes, I imagine. Do you have an idea of how many books you want for the series? Um, right now, I'm plotted out for for three. So um, I'm about two thirds of the way through the the second book, and uh, I've got a rough outline for the third. So we'll see how that goes. All right. And I usually ask, what are you working on now? So is this your current project, that second book? It is. And um, right now, the tentative title is called Wild Hunt. Uh, but fun fact, I have never been good about titles. <laughs> I Sometimes I, I come into, I just leave the title blank until the very, very end. And uh, sometimes I even send it to the um, the publisher saying, yeah, I don't know what to call this. <laughs> so um <laughs> I, I do sometimes get a lot of help from the editor or, or the publisher saying, uh, yeah, we have some ideas. <laughs> I don't know why that's the hardest part for me, but it always is. But right now the title is Wild Hunt. We'll see what it ends up being. <laughs> I love it. It makes sense to me. I have the hardest time naming anything. Pets? Yes. I, oh, my gosh. I It took me forever. Our My husband named our one dog and I named our, our, our second dog, and it took me forever to come up with a name. Yes. So completely understand. Oh my gosh, now that you know way more about me than you never needed to in terms of the fact that I cannot name anything without overthinking it ad nauseum. You probably already knew that if you're of listen to this podcast for any length of time. But let's just let's just move on from my bad naming abilities and take our final break of this episode. When we come back, Allison will be talking more about the Damon Collecting series. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. Together we dive into the world of sci-fi and science fiction. From episodes of Star Trek, Star Wars, to The Walking Dead, Resident Evil, all the hot new science fiction movies from the back doors of Marvel or DC. The Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. You'll never look at science fiction the same way again.
Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with Allison Levy. Do you want to talk about your Damon Collecting series at all for people who might not be familiar? Uh, sure. Uh, my Damon Collecting series is also an uh, urban fantasy, but with a very different feel to it. It's uh, about a uh, a Damon collector who's a person from another dimension coming to our dimension to collect and bring in for repair Damons, uh, which are little creatures who exist a little out of phase with our reality and they tempt people for good and evil and they're uh, she uh, her name is uh, Raquel Wild and she has a lot of encounters with some unusual people some unusual um, things and there's this sort of underlying uh, shadow group that's uh, starting to stir up trouble in her community and the rest of the world um, there are two books out on that. Uh, the first one's called uh, Gatekeeper, and the second one is called Blue Flame. And uh, I'm working on the third one, although right now, because of uh, the magic by any other name book coming out right now, Damon Collecting is on hiatus. We'll see uh, how that turns out. Uh, but I'd love to hear if uh, anyone, if anyone's interested in reading that or just wants to hit me up for a, uh, you know, tell me more about it. Happy to answer questions. Love it. Do you, so you, you've got the third one, um, for the Damon collecting series that's, that's out there in kind of the ether and you're working on possibly three for this. Do you yes. tend to, um, do you have agreements with publishers and that's how you decide what, what you're going to write next or how does that work in terms of determining which series you might write for? Um, right now, um, I'm getting a lot of great feedback on Magic by and other names. So that's sort of where my energy is right now. Um, in terms of the publisher, no, um, haven't heard anything from them about, uh, which they prefer. So, um, cause we, uh, we just had magic by any other name come out. So, um, I don't think I'm under a lot of pressure, um, to do that. I do, um, because it's a hybrid publisher, um, it's not a traditional publisher. So they're not going to be, um, after me as much as a traditional publisher would be to get a particular book out next. Uh, I have some leeway with that. It's one of the benefits of hybrid publishing, honestly. It does give me a lot more control over um, which series I focus on and which one I can kind of put aside for the moment. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And what have you been reading? Are you a mood reader or do you have a TBR that you stick to? A um, little bit of both. I have I have a uh, a list, but I do kind of pick and choose depending on my mood. Um, I recently finished The Crane Husband by uh, Kelly Barnhill, which was a, a fairly short read, but very interesting. Sort of a retelling of the classic uh, Japanese fairy tale of the crane wife uh, with uh, definitely a different twist to it. It was, it was very interesting. And I'm just getting started on Katie Carradine's book, Rain Returned, which is the first of her um, Fell Serpent series. So I'm really looking forward to getting more into that. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, internet presence. So I know you have a website. If you can share that as well as any social media that people can uh, maybe learn more about you or interact with you. Absolutely. Come see me on Instagram. I'm at A. Levy Author. Um, I also have a, a new website, AllisonLevyAuthor.com. Um, the old website is DamonCollecting.com. It's still up. It'll be gradually phased out for the new one. Um, you can also email me at A. Levy Author at Gmail. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, is there anything that we haven't covered, Allison, that you wanted to make sure you highlighted during our time together? Um, I mean, nothing in particular. I've really enjoyed talking with you. Um, I really hope this book will resonate with people as well as entertain them. And if anyone has any um, fun or interesting ideas for mythical creatures I can add to the second or third book, shoot me an email because I'm always looking for new ones. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. And I, like I said, was not expecting a wear hyena. So <laughs> I love it. <laughs> It was it was a lot more fun to to write than a werewolf. I think it just it it, took, it got I got to take it in different directions, but it's still sort of a slightly familiar creature. So right. I was excited to find that in uh, African mythology. Absolutely, yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me um, and for returning to the podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I, I'm so happy to to talk to you. 
Thank you once again, as always, to Allison for not only talking to me about the Witch's Odyssey series, but returning to the podcast, talking to me a little bit more about the Damon Collecting series, etc. Really appreciate it. Of course, if you are a fan of urban fantasy, then you should definitely check out both of these series. You have three books to read that are currently out, one in the Damon Collecting series, or excuse me, two in the Damon Collecting series, and one in Witch's Odyssey. If you it's getting a little late to be, not if you have to ship it. So yeah, there's still time to buy them uh, in physical form for uh, from a bookstore if you want to give them as a holiday present, Christmas presents, what have you. Maybe a New Year's present. That gives you more time. Or, you know me, make up a holiday, give a book. But <laughs> if you have a friend who loves urban mystery, urban fantasy, or if you yourself love urban fantasy, then uh, I recommend putting these on your TBR, buying them checking them out from a library, whatever suits you best. Just go read and uh, support authors. And then, of course, you can tell Allison your thoughts on social media, how you liked the books, etc. Um, you can follow her on social media or go to her website for more information. Speaking of social media, you can also follow the podcast here on all... Uh, not here. You can also follow the podcast on social media, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram, as usual, as I always say, I love hearing from you. So find the podcast and you'll find me as well. Come tell me what you're reading, what's on your TBR for 2024. Did you meet your 2023 reading goals? All of those wonderful things. I'm nosy and I love to know. So come find the podcast on social media. In the meantime, of course, if you haven't already done so, like, follow, and subscribe on the podcast platform that you're listening to this episode on. That way you'll always know when there are new episodes out. You can also leave reviews on those platforms. That can be written, starred. Um, every platform might be a little bit different, but anything helps to get the podcast out to more listeners. Don't overthink it like me trying to name something. You can leave one line if that is what is in your heart. Um, but I really appreciate it if you leave it. Also, join me for the next episode. Uh, I will be joined by author M.P. Woodward to talk about his thriller, There Are Spies Involved. Uh, that book is called Dead Drop. So join me for the next episode. In the meantime, I hope that you are not stressed about holidays. I hope you're having a wonderful time with friends and family and loved ones that you are hopefully getting to see and spend time with. Um, don't stress. Just Try to enjoy the season as much as you possibly can. And if you're stressed, drop out and read a book. <laughs> Just sit in a corner and read a book. I hope that you find plenty of time to get yourself lost in a good book. Thank you so much. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can and also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.